Hello, Warren here with a quick video in response to a post on the Moto Users Forum uh, by Fred Gambino, who asks, is it possible to rig a figure made of separate polygon pieces placed into one mesh item using a skeleton? By that I mean a figure wearing body armor that is made of separate pieces, for example. Or does the mesh have to be all one piece? So, to answer this question, I've gone over to the uh, Luxology share site and under scenes I've taken the cartoon skeleton which is one of the many excellent uh, meshes and scenes contributed by Stiderot and so we're going to be using that for this example okay so in that scene uh, if you do load it yourself you'll find that it's actually made up of uh, each bone is in a separate mesh layer. So all I've done is uh, selected all of those layers and copied the geometry and pasted it all into a single mesh layer. So it would be similar to what Fred is asking about, which is uh, a bunch of pieces of geometry in a single mesh layer. So how do we go about uh, working with this with a skeleton? Well, if these were separate, uh, mesh layers, as has been suggested by some on the Moto forums, you could you could easily create a skeleton and then uh, parent each of the pieces of uh, geometry, each of the meshes, to a joint. But if things are in a single mesh layer, as in Fred's case, uh, the I think what I'm going to show is probably the best method. So what I've done is I, I went ahead and I used the the skeleton tool here, and I've already made a uh, joint skeleton for the skeleton. Wow, this is getting like multiple layers deep of uh, skeleton. Uh, I just suddenly realized that using a skeleton mesh with and then talking about moto skeleton might be a little confusing, but okay. We'll just uh, we'll try to clarify the meaning between the two. So um, let's instead of calling this guy skeleton, the skeleton mesh I'm going to call Bob. There you go. So we've got Bob and we've also got our Moto skeleton composed of joints. So how do we go about um, weighting this guy? Now I'm going to show you something here which is kind of a little trick that I like to use that's going to speed up the process for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the... Well first let's go into setup mode because anytime we're going to do um, waiting or binding we have to be in setup mode so we go to setup you get the yellow border we select the uh, joint root of the hierarchy I select Bob our mesh and then I go over here to deformers and we're gonna say bind and we're gonna select for the type of bind a heat bind now a heat bind is really useful uh, kind of bind um, and it, but it's designed to work with a continuous uh, surrounding mesh volume. So what happens normally is if you had a character here composed of a single uh, volume of geometry then it's I imagine the heat bind is sort of radiating out from the joint until it hits geometry and that that's what determines uh, how much weighting that geometry gets relative to each of the joints. Now in this case because this uh, Bob is composed of multiple enclosed pieces, the heat bind's not going to like that. It's not going to know how to deal with that. Uh, the geometry is not being surrounded by, by, by joints. We've got all these different pieces of enclosed geometry. So the heat bind's going to fail. Now, this is where things get cool. Uh, there's actually, well, I would call it a feature. Some might say it's a bug. But if it's a bug, it's one I hope that Luxology never fixes because it's extremely useful. So I call it a feature. And here we go. Let's go ahead and try to heat bind this. And Moto's going to complain and give us an error. And it says edges cannot be shared by more than two polygons. I don't know if that's actually the case here. But um, anyway, we know why it failed because we've got these enclosed um, pieces of separate um, geometry. Heat bind no likey. So it's failed, fine, it's given us an error. And you'd think, well, that did no, no good whatsoever. But no, if we look, if we select Bob and we look under here under lists, under weight maps, you can now see it's actually gone ahead and created 
a weight map as it would had the bind succeeded, but these are empty weight maps because the bind failed. But it went ahead and it's automatically created all these and named all of these weight maps for us and associated them with the different joints. So this is super handy. It's given us an automatic template to work from to go ahead and do all our, our weighting operations. Over here under the Deformers tab, you can also see it's created a normalizing folder. Now in Bob's case, we don't really care about normalizing because we're going to be um, binding 100% weight to each of his bones of his skeleton geometry uh, because they're not going to, he's not going to be a bendy Bob, he's going to be a, a rigid Bob. So uh, normalizing would normally be when you're balancing weight between things to, to add up. Um, so we could remove everything from the normalizing folder if you want, but it's, it's also not going to hurt to have it in there. So let's go ahead and start waiting. Okay, so let's start off by um, selecting some of uh, Bob's geometry. So I'll select his arm. And now we need to select in item mode an associated joint. So there we go, we've got a joint and we've got the, uh, the going back into poly mode for his um, associated geometry. We go to weighting down here on the left hand side and we choose adjust weights. And then we're gonna click and drag to the right to crank up the weight to 100. If I zoom in here, you can see little 100s popping up. So one way you, you can help visualize this a little better, I find, is to uh, switch from OpenGL view to vertex map mode and then you'll see the the red for the 100% uh, weighting that we've got going there okay so let's go ahead and select the the next um, go to item select the next joint we want to wait for go back to poly mode I'm gonna double click hold shift double click to select the next two hunks of um, geometry I want to wait select adjust weight click drag to the right 100% and now that's uh, all that geometry is bound 100% to that to that joint and we can keep just keep going this way to do the to do the whole uh, the whole of Bob so we can grab this thigh for example um, select the thigh bone adjust weight crank it up the shin bone connected to that I'm not gonna go there okay uh, next one, click, shift click, just wait, crank. Okay, so you get the idea. We keep going like that until we will have weighted all of Bob. And the end result of that, let's exit setup mode here. And we'll go back to um, advanced open jail mode. Item, I'm gonna grab his arm and uh, do some do some uh, rotation on it. Whoop. Now we haven't bound his hand yet, so it's not moving at all, but you can see the two joints that we, we have weighted already. There we go. They are deforming. And they're deforming rigidly. It's all, uh, pretty much similar to what you would have got if they had been parented in separate, uh, separate layers. And since we did his two legs, we can, we can work with the legs too. Go, Bob, go. There you go. But obviously, you've got to keep. Uh, we'd have to wait all of the, uh, all of the joints to geometry to make him fully ready to animate and deform. Anyway, that's the process. I hope that was helpful. Um, and thanks for watching.